Today is a rain day, so I'm stuck in the garage working on the 65. So I started putting more bamboo in here, the smaller stuff, to kind of make a more secure where people can't put their hands in here. And I'll finish this off later. And then I got a piece going down here that kind of hides the other bamboo inside there for the spacing. And then I got a piece across the bottom so I can start tying in and bracing it with with so here's a sneak preview of what's going to be going on in the channel in the next couple of days. Is it's starting to get cold. There's cold fronts coming coming in. So I want to be able to sit in the truck out by in a parking lot somewhere. Maybe do a live stream. Just hang out in the truck with the windows rolled up when it's 32 degrees outside. But yet still maybe, uh, you know, it's going to be cloudy, but that's okay. I'll have enough power for this. Trust me, and you'll see why. So I'm going to make a homemade heater. That way I don't have to have the truck motor running. And I'm going to make it out of slinkies. This is a slinky. I put on a piece of bamboo. This is just a mock-up to show you how you can build it internally. So you take, a, this is a sample of a negative side of a battery. So I'm just connected to the ground right here, the frame of the truck. Okay. So we're connected to the frame. I really need a little heavier gauge wire, but this will work. And then this is the positive side of the battery and I'm going to connect to it right here and we're going to see how many amps it pulls from the amp meter. So right now we're not pulling any amps. We connect to it and it jumps up to six amps, a little over seven. All right. So now watch this. I'm going to pull the slinky away from itself a little bit. So those, they're not all connecting. Let me pull this away and it's already starting to get warm to where it's kind of hard to touch. I made one of these years ago and uh, I really don't know where the video is, but now I'm actually going to use it. So now that we pulled it apart, the amps are about down to six amps. So your average 100 watt panel like this puts out about five to four and a half amps, sometimes six, depending on what kind of panel it is. These 200 watt panels will put out 11 to 12 amps. So a 200 watt panel would run two slinkies. You could also run them in series, but we'll get into that later. So right now it's almost where you can't touch it. So what temperature are we running? So it's 93 degrees, of course, 96, 98, 99. It's getting up there. It depends on where you, you hit it. It's not getting the correct temperature, but here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's kind of hard to hold your hand on that. So what I have plans on is I'm going to take a 12 volt computer fan, you know, the ones with the LEDs. I'm going to put the slinky inside of PVC or some type of tubing. And I'm just going to experiment with one slinky uh, right now. I could have two in series. If I series these two, I'll get double the surface area and half the amp draw. So if I hook up two slinkies end to end, I'm going to only have about three amps of draw and I'll have more surface area. So I'm going to experiment with one slinky to start with and a little PVC tube with a computer fan on one end and see what kind of air I get out of the end to see if it's even making it warm enough. I'm thinking it's going to work though because that's pretty hot. You can't hold your hand on it. So I'm going to put these closer together and I want to do that while we're watching the amp meter so you can see the amps go up and why why the amps go up is because the metal starts touching itself and it starts almost making a short circuit completely so as i put them closer and i'm starting to squeeze it with my hand it'll get up to 10 amps see that now we're going to start challenging this little wire here because it's not big enough this thing's probably going to be getting warm so i'm going to open it back up to about where it's at six amps it's about six amps and let's see the temperature now we're at 118 degrees, 120, 121, 122, 123. So it's gonna be climbing as it gets closer together. And the reason why is because there's no um, air getting in between the fins. So the closer you put them together, the hotter it's gonna be. So now it's probably just too hot to touch at all. Yeah, that burns pretty quick. So th this is technically turning into a little space heater. And of course, bamboo is not recommended because this stuff would eventually catch on fire. This is just a demonstration. Don't do this at home. 
So we're hovering around six and a half to seven amps with it that close together. We're just gonna leave it right there. And I, again, I can just rip this off if it catches on fire and get it out of there. But you can, I can smell it now. I can start to smell it. But again, when this thing is sitting in a pipe or you could also do it another way. You could have a, uh, a bottle, a glass bottle. So I've done this before. You put a glass bottle, like a Coke bottle in there and then it's around the glass. So it starts heating up the glass as well. And then you could run your tube, your PVC tube over that. You just gotta um, isolate the slinky from the PVC so it doesn't start to melt the PVC. Cause right now we're getting up there where it's uh, really too hot. We're up to 160 degrees, 150, 153, 50, it's hovering at 161. Depends on where you're, where you're at. So now we're close to a little over seven amps. So we're gonna pull these back apart a little bit, lower our amp draw. We're gonna check our little green wire here. So our green wire is getting a little warm cause it's a little bit too small for this application. So I'm gonna pull these apart and then and see how they're pulled apart just like that. I'm gonna leave it like that and show you the amp draw. So we're pulling about five amps. So that this separation right there would give us what a 100 watt panel could put out. So there's Amazon. I wish he was stopping here. I ordered a little bitty small $13 amp for the truck. So that's a five amp draw. Let's check the heat on that. I wish I could keep it there. Maybe it'll stick right there. There we go. That's about five amps over here. A little over five amps. Let's see what kind of temperature we're getting there. When you separate them, it's gonna get a little cooler because it doesn't have something to measure off of. So you have to kind of measure it at an angle because it's not hitting the metal all the way. It's kind of hitting the air to do the measurement. But if you put your hand on it, you cannot hold your hand on that. That is hot. You can feel the heat coming off of it. I probably did this maybe seven to 10 years ago and I didn't really have a use for it at the time, but now I actually have a use for my old idea as a slinky space heater. And um, I'm gonna put it into uh, play here. And the cool thing about it is, is I was also thinking about designing it with a little rope in there so I can have it variable heat, okay? So as you move the slinky closer together, it would get hotter because it's gonna heat up more because the current's going up and this is gonna get hotter. And then I'm gonna experiment with that. And as you pull it away, it'll get cooler and see the amp draw goes down. So I'm gonna experiment with that just for fun, even though it doesn't need to be variable like that but that'll be the like version two or something. But yeah, that's putting off some pretty good heat. So let's see what that does when I really get it set up. And I'm gonna work on it for a couple of days and we'll work on it together. So you'll get to see my different versions of whichever ones I end up using. So I'm gonna disconnect it for now for safety reasons. And let's see how long it holds the heat. All right. still really hot let's see what it is with it turned off it's still 115 116 now when the fans blowing over it, it's going to cool off a lot quicker. I'll probably end up using a dryer hose for my heat tunnel because this stuff obviously has the ability to withstand uh, withstand the heat of a dryer so I have this stuff around the house I got it hanging over there I use it as kind of decoration because uh, I had a lot of these at one time. So yeah, I'll probably end up using this as my heat tunnel and it'll be about the right size for a computer fan to fit on the outside. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up using. All right, so here's the space heater. I plugged it in, it actually works. So maybe the safety switch had triggered and it takes sometimes 30 minutes to kick back on. So we're gonna check the ohm load. This thing's turned on high. So we're gonna see how many ohms it is just at the end of this socket to see what it's gonna look like 
amperage wise with 12 volts so that's nine ohms right there and that's before everything heats up and that's probably with the motor included so i need to disconnect that ac motor to get a true reading but it's to me tells me it's safe to hook up just temporarily because it'll probably uh this motor's probably going to hum with dc direct i'm just going to tap it on the amp meter just to see how many amps it pulls even with the ac motor still hooked up and we're going to kind of get our range of what this thing would be like. So my, my concept here is, is I'm going to take the AC motor out, put a computer fan in here, and then hook this up rec direct, 12 volt direct, and see what kind of heat it'll put out just that way. So let's hook up our leads to one side. We're going to do this side as a ground. I'm going to make sure this thing's sitting there like that. We're going to hook this side up to our amp meter, and I'm just going to tap it right here just for a second and see what the amp meter shows. All right, so that's that's working. So I'm going to just connect it permanently for a second and show you. We're pulling about maybe two amps. So I'm going to t disconnect this fan motor so we don't heat it up. I don't think I've ever had one of these apart, so this is going to be interesting to see what's holding this together something still feels like it's attached that concerns me a little bit something's pulling maybe it's strain relief on this cable here that's probably what it is i'm gonna work it's probably, it's probably this cable here and that's exactly what it was had to take this little strain relief grommet out and now we can get to that this thing is kind of nasty it's got hair and cat hair all over it or something it's pretty pretty rough it's okay so we're going to investigate this thing a little bit further i'm going to disconnect the fan so give me a second all right so you're seeing this the same time i'm seeing it see if we'll be able to get this out further yeah they didn't leave us much slack so we got we got our heating elements that are series so that's good news that means we could parallel those and pull more current and it would get hot quicker or no this is high and low so we got high and low that's what it looks like that's what yeah that's what it is so we could technically hook both of those together and uh, experiment with that but yeah here's our switch our on it our high low switch and here's our thermostat control of course we'll leave that on all the time so i just need to disconnect this fan get that off of there and move these wires around here and yeah the fan is down in here so i'm gonna have to work with this to get this fan loose yeah so give me a second so the easiest way to bypass all this stuff is i'm just going to hook straight onto these heating elements here so i'm going to disconnect these hot rods that one's coming loose easy that one doesn't want to come loose at all so i'm going to work on that for a bit so here's your little safety switch right there so if it falls over and loses contact right there all right so i'm hooked onto here and this is probably the high so at high we're getting about it's pulling about three amps so we'll see if that heats up anything i doubt if it's going to do hardly anything yeah i feel some heat yep it is working sure is so we're going to leave it on that for a while and like I said, my plan is to put a computer fan right here because this AC fan is obviously not going to work. We got some debris in there. So I'll replace this with a computer fan and obviously it's going to have LEDs. I'll find one around the house somewhere. So yeah, I can feel some warmth. So I can also use this as well. Um, and we're pulling still about three amps. So you could easily run this solar direct on a sunny day with a 100 watt panel. 
it would be perfect because the 100 watt panel was actually actually going to be putting out a little bit more voltage that might step this thing up a little bit more but yeah it's heating up pretty good so I'm going to switch it to the lower heat a little bit. Let's see what kind of temperature we're getting on that. 108, 109, 110. I don't know if you can see that. 114. Just depends on if you're hitting one of the uh, 121. So, yeah. This is how you can convert. I'll show you how I, the end product. But, you know, don't do this at home, please. And I don't have it fused. So, yeah, this is not safe. But I'm going to have the end product, what it would be like. Um, and I could even leave the little safety switch hooked up so I can have that in the, in the matrix too. Um, I won't be able to use the LEDs, the power LEDs, because those are, uh, don't see any rectifiers. Or is that a rectifier? Mm, that could be a fuse. Let's see. Continuous out. Yeah. I don't think that's a rectifier because I don't see any four ends. It's probably just some kind of fuse. I'll have to check that out. So anyway, um, but yeah, this would work in the truck. I could put this um, under the seat and just bypass the little safety thing and um, have this blowing underneath the seat to keep the truck warm because that's, that's some pretty good heat right there. And that's just 12 so volts. we're pulling direct. about 3 amps. And we're hitting it at about 14.2 volts. I don't know what voltage we're getting here at the end. So let's get a true reading before we start getting technical with our... I'm trying to figure out how many watts this thing is pulling right now. So we're going to check our volts here. We're going to do this right. So I'm going to go negative, positive. We're getting 13.9 volts. 13.8 so we're probably losing some loss here in this little skinny green wire because uh, I'm coming into it with 14.1 so that's the Alexa law. what's 14 times 3 14 times 3 is 42 so we're pulling 42 watts off of our system right now and that's exactly what I said a hundred watt panel will give you plenty of reserve if you wanted to run this solar direct so let's say you were camping somewhere and you just wanted a little bit of space heat in your tent. You know, this is not going to heat the whole thing when the wind's blowing, but it's going to give you a little bit of heat in the tent. So we're pulling about 40 something watts right now. And as you increase the voltage, you know, you're going to get more power out of it. So I could hit this thing with two solar panels and series and parallel. I could just start going up and up and up with the voltage and the amps. And get this thing right back to where it was made as far as the 1500 watts which that would be kind of dangerous so hitting this thing with about 300 watts would definitely give me um uh, enough power but i'd have to up the voltage you see what i'm saying so you have to up the voltage to get these things to get hotter all right so yeah we're still at three and then when we go on these other leads here i'll show you that's low so that's low heat, and that's about a little over one amp, close to two. So that's basically about 20 watts. And of course, it's not going to heat up much. So these two leads right here are our money leads. That's going to be what I'm going to be using for this heater. So now I just got to find a computer fan and um, get all this put back together. Won't be done today, but this is the kind of stuff I'm going to be doing on the channel here in the near future probably tomorrow because it's going to these cold fronts are popping in and we're it's going to be winter time before you know it so i can have heat in the truck um whenever it starts getting cold so we can at least still be in the truck another thing i'm curious about is i want to do this at night time so i might come out here later when it's dark and see if these little elements are even glowing at all six hours later so it's what six hours later something like that and I'm out here just, I was curious to see if I could see these elements glowing red. So I don't see anything glowing. Um, it's pretty warm. So I, I ended up hooking up to both of the elements. And I'm pulling about close to 4 amps now, as you can see. Close to 4 amps. And as far as the temperature, 
Um, let me just see if I can do all this with one hand without blocking the camera. So, in spots, it's 104 degrees, 109, 115. In this first part right here, 112. So, yeah, it's putting off heat, but it's not glowing red, obviously. You're, you know, we're not hitting this with a lot of amps, with a lot of uh, voltage. So, that's the uh, update on that. So, let's get back to the uh, regular part of the video. So, I just wanted to interrupt the video with this and no it's not glowing red but um it definitely is putting off some heat so nothing like the slinky heater the slinky heater is going to be the the key there so i'm definitely going to focus on that and it's a lot smaller i'm going to check this amp meter here this clamp meter this one's kind of finicky so we're going to compare it with my other amp meter so it's showing about 6.5 Depending on how I'm holding it, 6.7, and we'll compare that with this one. It's about right on the money, both of them. Yep, 6.7, almost 7 amps. So yeah, this thing's closer than I thought. They're both pretty close. And that's the slinky heater that I was just checking. Boy, that thing is hot. Ooh. Yeah, I think the slinky heater is going to work out better than anything. 140 almost, 135. But of course, it's going to work out more better, more better because we got more amps we're pulling. <laughs> Not that it's going to be more efficient, but it's going to put off more heat is my point. But we're going to compare my homemade slinky uh, DC heater to my conversion from AC to DC space heater that you could go buy at a hardware store or any place. So we're going to compare the two and see which one gives us more heat. But we're, you know, of course, this one's going to be pulling less power. So in theory, it's going to give us off less heat. But this one is going to pull more power. So you need more power. So it's probably, oh, yeah. Now what are we getting? That's getting hot. 160, 158, 159. Yeah. So yeah, this one's definitely doing a good job. I think we're going to call it a day. I'm going to go in there and read the comments. And we'll wrap this up and we'll we'll start on this project tomorrow. Oh, an right, update. I decided I'm, instead of putting two 100 waters back here and the 100 waters would stick out, I'm going to do another one of these high efficient 200 waters. And I'm going to cut this board. Let me get over here on the other side so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to cut this board at the exact angle because the panel is going to come down and set on a platform across here. So there's going to be wood going across here and wood down here. You, you'll probably see the pictures of that pretty soon, if not already in this video. So the wood's going to go across here, and I just got to cut that just a little bit there and right there. So I'll cut me a little step right there. The wood's going to go there. The panel's going to angle down perfectly whenever I'm uh, parked for security reasons. And when I'm uh, daily when I'm out here with the truck it's always going to stay straight back so it's going to stick out perfectly it's going to be back out here somewhere and it's going to angle down here and that that will also kind of close everything in for for security reasons and then when I have the bamboo down on this side you won't be able to reach your hands in here nothing so that's the whole goal there but they're on back order can't find them anywhere so if anybody knows where to get these 200 watt new powers, and I know you can find the regular 200 watt ones, I want the high energy ones, the ones that have these split cells. So I'm looking for the new high energy ones, uh, not the old ones that you can find all day long, but everybody's buying out these new high energy ones. Should have bought more when I could. Could have, but I didn't know there was gonna be a supply chain shortage and all that stuff. So yeah, solar panels are hard to find now, the good ones. All right, so that's the update on that. I really wish I had it on there because I really love to have this thing where I could go take it somewhere and go shopping so we could go to the grocery store or something in it, but it's all right. It'll be okay. This is the time of the video where I rip and read the comments like a professional dyslexic. So, yeah, today was fun. Uh, really no stress day. Made coffee with the 60, with Rusty Watt and um, started working on the 
slinky heater and the uh, conversion from a regular space heater 110 to uh, 12 volt. So I'll probably be uh, working on that in the next couple of videos. We might get it all done on the next video, I'm not sure. So let's get to the comments. All right, so We The People 75, big shout out to We The People 75. I'm actually in his chat room right now as I'm editing this video, uh, interacting with everybody in there, good people. So check out We The People 75 if you're not familiar with him. He does live streams all the time, every day, and he hauls goods and stuff around to feed the world. All right, so he says, number 32 on the likes, as always, you amaze me with what you do, Fry TV Now. Even making coffee, amazing video, and even to use the RV inverter. Uh, yeah, the inverter is cool because it's got a 130 amp charger and a 2500 watt AC inverter, and it's a transfer switch. So you can go from uh, grid to shore power. Something I would never thought of using. Yep. I got that thing for a good price, 40 bucks. Used, they're like almost $2,000 right now. So, uh, Petard, <laughs> Part, Parta Bonza, I can never say that. Love it. Does the engine slant? You could sell it to Learning Leaning Tower of Power. I don't get that joke, but um, maybe somebody can help me with that. Remember, sometimes. Uh, Humor and comedy does not translate over text, especially dyslexia, when you're reading it. So, sorry, I don't get it, but uh, somebody might. All right, so uh, Sprout says, will there be a solar trailer next so we can go camping? I already have a solar trailer, so that means that you're new to the channel. That's awesome. So, I will uh, do my best to uh, feature the solar trailer uh, next couple of videos or just kind of give a glance at it. But yeah, that would be fun to hook the solar trailer up to uh, Rusty Watt and go camping out somewhere, even if it's out back. All right. So yeah, the solar trailer has enough power to run the uh, water well. All right. So Jess Olson and 99 Kids had Watts on his shirt. Seriously. And see, that's another one I don't get. Is that a shirt, a song? All right. All right, uh, Jess Olson, thumbs up with coffee, KCA TV, but what about the flux capacitor? And um, Ty Guy says, I'll take a large one, uh, coffee please. And then I asked him, does he like, uh, do you like your, your coffee with uh, sugar, black, or you like it? And he says he changes it up sometimes with uh, hazelnut cream. Please like, share, subscribe. YouTube seems to like the... Uh, a thumbs up it helps promote these videos for other people to see we'll do this again tomorrow love you all